Well, we are continuing to track reaction from the jobs report uh, that came out this morning. The U.S. adding 467,000 jobs in the month of January. Uh, roughly three times the number that was expected. Unemployment ticked slightly higher to 4%, and the labor force participation rate rose to the highest level since the pandemic began. Let's bring in Bill Rogers, Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis Institute for Economic Equity Vice President and Director. Bill, it's always good to get your analysis on these numbers. We were talking in the break, a bit of a surprise here to the upside. Uh, what did you think? What stood out to you in the number? Yeah, very much a surprise. I had to kind of sort of shuttle, um, <laughs> sort of scuttle uh, some of my notes that I had put together. But uh, yeah, a very strong number, but I think more most important or another important piece of this is too, the previous month number was revised, was revised upward. So, you know, one of my rules of thumb is you be careful with one month, one month doesn't make a trend. And so, you know, adding in that second month, I think add some levity to uh, to the result. But the other thing to think about too is that when you look at the non-seasonally adjusted number, that suggested in the payroll number that there would have been a close to a 2.8 million uh, numbers of jobs dropped uh, in, in the last, previous month because of you know, employers sort of releasing people after the, uh, the holidays. But with that 476,000 seasonally adjusted, that's kind of trying to tell me that actually uh, employers possibly were using this, hiring these people during the holidays and holding on to them to deal with some of their skill shortages or the labor shortages, uh, which could be also you know a positive a positive story. And then on the inflation front, yes, still a strong year over number, but it didn't accelerate. It didn't accelerate from the previous uh, previous month. Hey, Bill, Brian Chung here. I want to ask about kind of the composition of the unemployed, because it's also been interesting to see the number of people that were unemployed for 27 weeks and over, where you'd be worried that this is the demographic of people that might be more permanently sidelined because they've been out of the labor market for so long. Uh, it has come down a little bit, actually, over the uh, tail end part of last year. Uh, do you see that weighing on the employment of population or the labor force participation rate as well? Or are you seeing positive trends also? from that uh, above expected print that we saw this morning. Yeah, the good news was uh, participation uh, did, did also tick up, uh, ticked up across uh, the, the various demographic groups, which is, which is positive. Uh, it is a little concerning that, you know, a third, a little more, about a third of those who are unemployed are considered to be these long-term unemployed. And it could, and, and what this also signals for, for many economists talk is we are now getting to that point in the in the cycle where we have what we're called the structural unemployed. So people who have been, as you said, unemployed for 27 weeks or longer, uh, and they have rigidities in their life uh, on Main Street that make it harder for them to to you know to to, to join the economy, especially if they were in uh, some of the uh, your lower paying leisure and hospitality or educational uh, services or health services occupations or industries. Because we did see you know that that strong wage growth number, but it was largely tilted towards um, higher paying occupations and in, in, in industries. So uh, one way you you address these kind of these shortages or uh, is to raise wages, and so uh, we may need to see some more action uh, in these in these uh, occupations that, uh, that 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 have lower paying uh, that also are also were much more exposed to uh, COVID possibilities. But again, I think the potential good news in this report is that uh, people were held on uh, at, after the holidays. Uh, and, uh, and and so the structural uh, concerns that you know myself and other economists have, because that's why this labor secretary was talking about you know increased job training to address the skills gap to address those those shortages. Uh, that that it's, it's still very very important. Uh, but also because of Omicron and because of COVID, we also need to make sure we're investing in human uh, human priorities, particularly uh, mental health uh, resources for people, because it has been a tough slog. Yeah, Bill. And lastly here, I want to ask just about the disparate recovery here. You can't kind of underscore enough how important it is that some groups have been left out. It was a bit encouraging to see that the black unemployment rate, for example, did tick down to 6.9 percent in January after actually going up uh, quite a lot between November and December. What are you seeing on that front, even despite the, hard, the high job gains we saw this month? Uh, is are certain communities still being left out? Well, it's it's I can't. Well, there yes, there's always some communities that are left out. 
Um, and but when you're this deep into an economic recovery, look, because also we had the pandemic <laughs> jumping in here. But uh, you know, similar to the late 1990s, early 2000s recovery, uh, once you get down into this uh, this unemployment rate of like the four percent nationally, what that also is doing is it's spreading out growth to uh, to other communities and other groups. Think of a ladder where people are arrayed on that ladder associated with their education, their experience, their age, their gender, their race. And so by, by having these strong numbers, uh, that where we're also seeing participation rise, you know, that you can start to get back to that phrase, a rising tide lifts all boats. Um, however, as uh, what's gonna be, we'll be sharing from my institute in a few weeks is uh, we're, we'll be publishing something called the State of Economic Equity. And we're going to be looking at uh, what ha what's going on in that in this coming year, and we're actually calling it a, a transition. 2022 is going to be a period of transition. That with these strong job numbers, there's going to be an impetus or desire to pull back on relief and recovery efforts. But uh, as some of my staff are going to show in a variety of dimensions, from health, of uh, uh, childcare, from housing uh, to uh, debt, and and also wealth. That it's going to be a very, uh, we have to be very careful about how we pull that relief and recovery back, even though the, the economy is strong, because uh, the pandemic, as we said, showed uh, some uh, very ch uh, ch subtle challenges, or if not so subtle, uh, problems that uh, many communities are still facing. And yes, resiliency is the key word, but we have to help people with this transition and do it uh, in a humane way.